Hello and welcome back to the Villa Filler podcast. I'm here as always with my good friend Dan Wiseman. Dan Bubakar Kamara has joined Aston Villa from Olympic Marseille on a free transfer. Yeah, you can say that again, mate. You can say that. I'm so excited to get into this, mate. This is unreal. One of the best signings um, I can remember. I'm so excited to the price. Like, oh, mate, it's a dream. It's a dream. So buzzing to get into it. Before we do, guys, we've got a message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by the wonderful guys over at OneFootball. It is the place to get all of the most up-to-date football news, scores, articles, live updates. You couldn't ask for more. Dan, we use this app every single day of our lives and they've been kind enough to sponsor us here at the Villa Filler again. Yeah, it powers the podcast, mate. It's my go-to place for live scores, stats, and news from 200 leagues, 12 different languages. It's got the lot, mate. So guys, if you check out OneFootball using the link in the top of the description, it'll help us out. It'll help you guys out and it'll help you just enjoy the game that little bit more. Be it's like Dan and I, download OneFootball. <laughs> if you haven't checked out OneFootball, make sure you do so using the top link in the description. It helps Dan and I out more than you can imagine. Bubakar Kamara, mate. Wow. Again, Coutinho signs £17 million. How do we top that? By going and getting one of the world's most highly sought after holding midfielders on no more than a boss man deal, mate. It's fantastic. There has been interest for the longest time in this man from the likes of Manchester United, Arsenal, Tottenham, uh, Newcastle as well. And as well, mate, Atletico Madrid. They had an offer for this guy. They had it ready. Champions League football, they can offer this man everything he wants, okay? But he's chosen to join Aston Villa. He's been convinced by the project of Steven Gerrard. And he's not the only player to have rejected Atletico Madrid to favour Aston Villa, mate. Obviously, our own Matty Cash recently signed a new contract amidst a lot of talk about him potentially leaving for a £30 million move in January. This is a massive statement as to the direction of this football club, right? Oh, 100%, mate. This is one of the sort of premier younger defensive midfield prospects in the world. You sort of look at the likes of Aurelio. Um, yeah, I think he's in that bracket. Yeah, I'll say it. I'll say it. You know, you've got like Aurelian Tushomeni. Um, yeah. Boob Kakamara is obviously in that. I think, you, you know, you've got like Ismail Benacer, Declan Rice, Ibrahim Sangare. These guys are sort of hailed as, as the next generation of defensive midfielders. And we've picked this guy up on a free. Looks like that contract is five years. It's going to run until June 2027. Um, it's another signing, which it seems like Gerard's been at the heart of. Fabrizio Romano uh, said he was he was key in explaining the deal and selling the project to Bubakar Kamara. So in, in the same case that he was with the, uh, with the Coutinho deal, it looks like the pull of Gerard is really in full effect now. And especially in those sort of midfield positions where they're finding it really hard to turn down and, and for him to reject, as you said, Atletico Madrid, mate, Cholo Stimirani, the amount of amazing midfielders that sort of come into that club and, and grow um, to turn down Champions League football, to turn out for one of the biggest clubs in Europe, one of the most revered managers in the world um, and to come to Villa and to buy into a project for a club that have just finished the season in, in 14th. I think... As I said in the in the Coutinho video, mate, maybe this that transfer has knock on effects because it puts Villa on the map continentally. And I dare say that without that sort of Coutinho signing, maybe this looks a little bit different. It's it's a fantastic statement of intent, mate. He's one of the premier, as I said, defensive midfield prospects in in world football right now. Um, yeah, he's he's been at the heart of of Marseille's trip all the way to the semi finals of the Europa Conference League. They're currently sat second. Um, well, they finished the season in second, in, yeah, in in Liga, um, and um, yeah, th they've had a really good. Si and it's honestly no no overstatement to say that he's been in the heart of absolutely everything. No, for sure, and it's like with Coutinho, we were so excited because the level of of player like coming in straight away is phenomenal. The talent that, that guy possesses, the minute he walks through the door is the, the best we've seen in a player that's ever joined the Villa, I think it's fair to say. And what's exciting about Bubakar is not only does he walk into this midfield straight away and improve it before a ball's even kicks, Dan, there's, there's such a ridiculously high ceiling with this guy. Now, there have been a few, I don't want to say misconceptions. I think people think that this guy's an eight. Now, Dan, 
I think the perfect player to compare Kamara to is Sergio Busquets, but without the bastardry. Um, and, I, you know, I say that because this guy, he is... And they don't really exist, Dan. He's a deep-lying playmaker. He really is. That's what he does. He creates things from the halfway line. I implore you guys to check out YouTube compilations of this guy's range of passing. It's, it's, it's an outrage. It's a joke. Uh, a 91% pass completion rate is averaging. Um, averaging about 79 passes per game as well. Uh, both of them stats put him within the top three percentile of midfielders in the whole world over the past year, respectfully, mate, which is exactly what you want. There's a bit of height there to him as well, which is, of course, something that you would want in this midfield because as it stands, we are quite a small team. Um, and the, again, mate, you know, he, he's averaging um, just shy of 0.8 key passes per game, averaging around three big chances created as well per game, uh, two tackles, uh, 1.2 clearances, 1.4 interceptions. Not only is he able to create things from deep, and, and I think that's often what Villa are missing at times, mate, is it's, okay, like the defenders have the ball, give it to the midfield, what's next? Generally, it's just hoof, or it's, it's not ever really thought, of, thought out too much. It's, it's generally rushed, but this guy, he has the creativity to, to, to pull the strings from, from such deep positions, which it excites me, mate, honestly, because I don't want to see another hoof ball again down Villa Park. <laughs> no, absolutely not, mate. Absolutely not. He, he operates in, in some really interesting positions, both defensively and, and offensively. Um, he's really, as you said, mate, really quite press resistant um, sort of on the ball. He, his game is very fluid. He plays with an intelligence that's that's quite far beyond his you know tender age. He's, he's only 22. Um, he looks like, you know, he's also got the ability to, ability to step into centre half as well. So he's he's one of those sort of deep line sixes that can that can drop into a back line. Um and I think, you know, when you look at how he presses, how he structures that Marseille midfield, he anchors one of the best side in France. But yeah, it is that ball playing that um that really catches the eye, mate. So he, you know, nobody played more successful passes this uh, last season in Ligue 1 than Bubakar Kamara with 2,099. He also made the third best amount of successful passes in the opposition half as well with 1,018. So he's a magnet in there, mate. He's really good at receiving the ball in the half space, playing between the lines, keeps it safe. It's nothing too experimental, but it's he's a very good recycler of the ball from that sixth position. Someone that I think could learn a lot from Steven Gerrard. We've offered him what looks to be a very bumper package to get this over the line. But that's, as I said, to stop the likes of Atletico and Bayern sniffing around him because he, his numbers are off the charts. And I think when you look at him, he's got that experience of playing at the top end of the league. He's got that experience of, of playing in Europe. Um, it ticks so, so many boxes, mate. And I think he's going to add, I think, an upside to this side. And I think whilst, whilst guys will have been worried, okay, yes, we like, you know, the people want experience and stuff like that in that in this Villa side. You can't deny this lad's ability. He's absolutely off the charts. And it's had all of the top clubs around Europe on watch. And I think it's a huge testament to the owners, particularly for the package that we've put together that's been able to sell this club because... Um, it's probably not the easiest sell, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, fantastic what the, the guys in the board have, have been able to do to get this over the line. It's, it's such a statement of intent. Absolutely, mate. It's it's massive. And, and again, you know, what's interesting about it, we don't have a very good history with French players, do we, mate? So hopefully, I mean, I think Dean has broken that curse. But me personally, I'm really hoping that we get the best out of Morgan Sanson. These guys have played together. These guys have played Champions League football in a midfield together. So hopefully... Hopefully they can do that for the Villa, who knows? Um, but guys, if this is a transfer that's excited you, which I'm sure it has, let us know by commenting down below if you're excited, mate. I'm, I'm already excited for pre-season, like, just to see this yes, guy indeed. ball out. Uh, squad numbers, all this kind of stuff. It's just, it, it's, it's summer, baby. It's, we thrive here at the Villa Villa on that. Uh, transfer rumour mills announcement. So guys, make sure you subscribe to never miss a podcast from us here at Heart of the Hole. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Up the Villa.